Ancient History Guinea worm disease, Dracunculiasis, was first mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible in 1450 BC as, quote, the fiery serpent. What is guinea worm disease? Guinea worm disease is a parasitic infection caused by the Dracunculus medensis, commonly known as the guinea worm. The guinea worm is a white slender parasite which once ingested grows and matures within the host's body. As the worm grows, it mates with one of the opposite sex within the body. When the guinea worm is ready to, it will expose itself through a painful blister and release eggs into the water. Pathology. The cycle starts. Seeking relief from pain, sufferer soaks a blister with exposed worm in nearby water source. On contact with water, the worm bursts, releasing hundreds of thousands of immature first stage larvae into the water. Here you see the blister and the exposed worm emerging into the water. The worm then releases its larvae into the water. Tiny water fleas which reside in the water source ingest the larvae which molt twice becoming mature third stage larvae. The process takes about two weeks. Here you see the third stage larvae within the water flea. Another person drinks the water containing the water fleas with the infective larvae. The water fleas are digested, releasing the larvae into the stomach. Here's the larvae in the stomach. The stomach acid kills the water flea, but not the guinea worm larvae. The larvae, which resist digestion, migrate to the small intestine and penetrate the intestinal wall into the body cavity, where they grow into worms and mate. Here are what the male and female guinea worms look like. As you can see, the female guinea worm is much longer than the male. After approximately 10 to 14 months, the fertilized female worms, up to 3 feet long, move through connective tissue to various areas of the body, usually the li lower limbs such as legs and feet. Here you can see the female guinea worm move down towards the person's left foot. Approximately a year later, after the larvae were ingested, the worm forms a painful blister near the skin surface. The blister bursts, exposing the worm. The worm then releases its larvae into the water, which get eaten by water fleas, which are then ingested by another person. And the cycle continues. Diagnosis. Approximately a year after becoming infected, a person will begin to experience symptoms of illness. Blisters form on the lower extremities, legs and feet. Guinea worm exposes itself in order to reproduce. Here you see a medical professional pulling the guinea worm out of a blister on a patient's ankle. 1981 to 1994. The Steering Committee of the International Drinking Water Supply and Sanitation Decade, 1981 to 1990, issued a statement supporting the eradication of guinea worm disease as only a sub-goal. The World Health Assembly decided to voice their opinion for the eradication of guinea worm disease and classify it as an indicator of abject poverty and absence of safe, clean water. 1995 to 2010. Prior to the 1980s, there were on average about 3.5 million cases of guinea worm disease reported from around the world. Since 1980, guinea worm disease has been eliminated from Asia, leaving the disease only in Africa. 9 million pipers, one for every single man, woman, and child at risk of contracting guinea worm disease in Sudan were given out. 2004. The GWEP achieves a more than 50% reduction of annual cases of guinea worm disease compared to the year before. This is also the largest percentage reduction in a single year since 1986. 2005. There are 10 guinea worm endemic countries still in the world. 
Ghana, Sudan, and Nigeria contribute to more than 90% of all remaining cases. 2008. Guinea worm disease reaches an all-time low of 4,619 cases reported in six endemic countries. 2011 to 2012. 2011. Ghana VP officially announces in July that the country has completed 14 consecutive months reporting zero indigenous cases of guinea worm disease after a 23-year nationwide battle. 2012. During a press conference, the Carter Center announced the lowest case totals in the history of the eradication campaign. 542 cases of guinea worm disease were reported from January to December 2012 in South Sudan, Chad, Mali, and Ethiopia. Affected persons. People living in rural areas with contaminated water supplies are at high risk of contracting guinea worm disease. Children are more susceptible to getting guinea worm disease too. Treatments, prevention. There is no known cure or vaccine for guinea worm disease. Removal of the guinea worm involves wrapping the worm around a small stick and rolling and pulling the worm out until completely removed. The best method of prevention is education. Tell people with guinea worm disease not to enter sources of drinking water. Teaching people how to use cloth filters to clean out larvae carrying water fleas from drinking water. Barriers to eradication. War-torn countries such as Mali and South Sudan prolong the spread of guinea worm disease. Wars and conflicts within countries can halt the transportation of filters and education to the people who need them. Prognosis. Patients may heal completely or be left with debilitating injuries caused by the guinea worm. Patient acquires further infections within open wounds, blisters, while having worm removed. If the blister is not properly bandaged, then dirt can enter the wound and cause more infection. Patient ends up continuing the guinea worm's life cycle by placing infected limb into public water source and allowing the guinea worm to release its larvae into the water. The Carter Center the Carter Center, founded by Rosalind and Jimmy Carter in 1982, has dedicated its existence to the elimination of global health issues. One of their major projects was the eradication of guinea worm disease, which they have nearly succeeded in, with only six reported cases left in the world as of April 24, 2014.